Welcome back to the Rock Coder Space Invaders tutorial. In this session, we're going to make it so that when the player is hit by a bomb, it shows an animation of blowing up. Um, it also has three lives, so you don't go immediately back to the game over screen. You'll have three lives to use, and we're going to make it so that when you've cleared a wave of invaders, the game doesn't end a new wave comes on, so we'll get some more continuity in the gameplay. We'll start off with getting the player to animate an explosion when he's been hit. To do that, simply add an explosion counter variable. We did something similar to this for the invader when they blow up to make sure the explosion lasted for six frames. It's slightly different for the player. So an explosion counter for this sprite only When you're set to exploding, we'll set the counter to zero. And over here in the update player, instead of just setting game over to true, we're going to change the explosion counter. When it's reached a certain value, we're going to say 80, which is just over a second in terms of time. So when the explosion counter reaches 80, actually that's just over two seconds. That's still that's, that's good. So when the explosion counter is 80, that's where the game ends. Until then, we want to be animating the player. So if you look at his costumes, we have a normal player sprite and then two explosion sprites. All we want to do is flip between those two. So we need to set the costume to flip back and forth. Now we don't want to flip every frame, that would be too fast, that would just flicker. So we're going to flip them every four frames. To do that, I'm going to use a explosion counter. I'm going to divide it by four. And I'm going to use a mathematical function called floor, which will prevent you getting any fractional values. It rounds it down to the nearest integer. So if explosion counter is 0, 1, 2, or 3, this value will come out as 0, 4, 5, 6, or 7 as 1, and so on. Now, I'm only interested in having two values because I've only got two costumes to flip back and forth between. So I'm going to use the modulus operator, which is a remainder operator. So I take the value of this and do the modulus of 2. That will give me whatever remains after that value is divided by 2. So it's either going to be a 0 or a 1. Now my costumes are player explode 1 and player explode 2. So if I add a 1 to this value, and I now have mathematical formula that is going to slowly flip between two costumes. You might want to go over that a few times. Essentially it is just causing the costume to flip between two different frames. In there I will join player explode and the value I've just calculated so it will be player explode one or player explode two. Now when the explosion counter has reached 80, I don't necessarily want to have game over. I'm going to have three lives in this game. If, if I've run out of lives, then game over. Otherwise, go back to the game. So let's add a lives variable. Make a variable called lives for all sprites. Already created it. Now when I'm touching a bomb, I'm going to change lives by minus one. So I've lost a life every time I touch a bomb. Down here, it says game over equals zero. I'm going to first check if lives equals zero. Then yeah, the game is over and I can hide the player sprite as it's being blown up. 
otherwise I want to set the player state back to active. He's just going to carry on playing but on his next life. So set the player state back to active. Because I'm changing the costume now, it's changing to explosions later on. I need to ensure oh, I've already got it in. That I'm using switching costume to the player at the beginning of the active state. So now if I run this code press space, I can destroy the enemies, I get hit by a bomb and I go into the animation I'm repeatedly getting hit by a bomb so I'm never actually stopping the animation there we go what I need to do is when I've been hit by a bomb I want to <laughs> remove any missiles and bombs from the screen, give myself a chance. So I'll broadcast to remove the missiles and I'll broadcast to remove bombs. Also in manage game I need to set it up the number of lives that I start with. So before I go into the main game loop I'll set the number of lives three. So now the only other thing, when I'm actually exploding I want the invaders to stop moving. I don't want them to carry on marching and dropping bombs as I'm exploding. So let's go into the invader code. In update invaders I'm simply going to add a check in here to see what state the player is in. If the player state is active then that's fine. So if the player state is active, then we can carry on moving the invaders, dropping bombs, take that out of that conditional loop. Whether it's active or not, I still want to draw the invader clones, but they will only now move when I'm not exploding. So let's give that a quick look. The space, I can fire, I get hit by a bomb. And I'm blown up. That's great. They stopped moving and they started again now. Let's try again. Get hit by a bomb. Everybody stops while I blow up. Can't move. And I appear a third time. Game over. Lost my three lives. Working exactly as expected. Now, the other thing I wanted to achieve in this tutorial is when the invader count is zero, when I've killed them all. I don't want the game to be over. I want the invaders to go back to the top of the screen. A new wave, as it were. So to do that, when I've run out of invaders, I'm actually just going to call the create invaders block, which will create another set. There's a few things I'll have to update. Some of the variables that are set in initialized game need to be moved over to create invaders now. So let's see what we've got here. Well, for a start, I don't need to set the coordinates in the master sprite because it's never shown. I don't need to set the state because that's all done with lists now. The explosion counter should always be zero at the beginning. These variables, every time there's a new wave, I want to be moving to the right. I want to be starting with the counter at zero and I want the speed to be reset. So I shall move these down. to the bottom of Create Invaders. Finally, if I'm doing this, I don't need to create invaders in the initial loop. All I need to do in there is set the invader count to zero. Because then when it goes into Update Invaders, if the invader count is zero, it will automatically create invaders. Let's try this out. So can shoot all the invaders. And I'll have to shoot all the invaders to test whether this is working. Nearly done. 
six to go, two to go. If I shoot this last invader, a new wave appears, perfect. It starts marching down towards me. So now we have three lives. We have a player that can blow up when hit by bombs and we have multiple waves of invaders. In the next session, we'll get the invaders to get faster and faster and we'll look at adding some shields between the player and the invaders.